I was just an immigrant kid trying to make my way in Los Angeles, and O.J. Simpson changed my life. I was born in Zadar, Croatia in 1972. My parents immigrated to the United States when I was six years old. I remember landing at LAX at night and I've never seen a place so vast and so big and so many lights. My family settled where all Croatians settle in San Pedro, California. My parents went to go work at the cannery. My mom cleaned the tuna and my dad canned the tuna. My parents didn't speak English, so I did the work of an adult around the house from the time I was eight years old. I was the translator at parent-teacher conferences. I did their banking. When I was 15 and a half, I became the first family driver. In a way, my parents taught me to be a self-starter in early 1994. I was taking a photojournalism class at El Camino College. One day we had a guest speaker, a freelance photographer from the LA Daily News. And he showed us his pictures of the Northridge earthquake and explained to us how he uses a police scanner to obtain information to know where to go to get great news photos. And I really fell in love with that concept. For a kid that didn't get to go anywhere during his youth, I felt like the camera was my license to be anywhere that I wanted to be. And so I bought myself a scanner and started going to police calls so that I can make news photos. And for three months, I went to every police call that I heard on my scanner. And usually, everything I went to was nothing. But what that scanner taught me was it taught me how to leave the house. When you hear something happening, you pick up and you go. That was the magic ingredient that I needed for the rest of my life. On the morning of June 17th, 1994, I woke up sick as a dog. I had a bad case of strep throat and I spent most of the day sleeping until my scanner went off. And I'll never forget it. Warren Thal James Simpson, 187 suspect in a white Ford Bronco. He was on the move. That really woke me up. The NBA championships were interrupted by breaking news. We'll set it to NBC News. Here's Tom Brokaw. To show OJ moving on the five freeway. Thank you, Marvin. We are looking uh, once again at pictures of Al Cowling's cars. It makes its way along a freeway in Los Angeles. And the moment he went to the 91 freeway west, he was coming my way. I leapt out of bed and I went to go get that photo. I jumped into my truck and I take the Harbor Freeway North to the 91 Freeway East. I'm listening to the scanner and I'm listening to KNX, but what really tips me off is in the horizon, I could see a dozen helicopters. Once they get close enough, I know that it's time to pull over. And I pulled off at the Wilmington overpass. I had to park my truck way down there because here cars were double parked everywhere. When I get to the fence in this crowd of people and I point my camera through the fence, it's small chain links and I'm not experienced enough to shoot through that. So in all of my sickness, I climbed the fence. People line the freeway, many on the overpass. Get a visual on OJ and the adrenaline is just bursting through the scenes and you're click, 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 click. I was able to knock off about 10 frames. I think I have the picture of the chase. I decide I'm going to take it to my hometown newspaper. I'm gonna go take this picture to the Daily Breeze. I literally knocked on the back door and Wally Scally opened the door. I said, I'm a wannabe photographer and I just got a picture of OJ on film. Wally takes me back to the photo department and shows me how the pros do it. And we watch that print come to life and he looks at me and he's like, buddy, you just earned yourself a career. And I thought for sure I got front page. That was the dream of all dreams, I've got it. I don't just have the front page of the Daily Breeze, I thought maybe I'm gonna get more front pages. However, the photo editor at the Daily Breeze decided to go with another image. And my photo didn't see the light of day for a year. 
my visions of glory and grandeur quickly dissipated. But because of that photo, I was able to lock in an agent. My agent, Scott McKiernan at Zuma Press, started representing the photo. Subsequently, my photo grew in popularity and started getting published, and it sells every month all over the world. And in the last 30 years, I've made about a quarter million dollars off of that photo. Quickly, my career started to blossom. I was on the floor of Staples Center shooting Kobe every night, which as a kid who didn't get to go to sporting events, I was in absolute heaven. I photographed Brandy Chastain winning the World Cup for the United States in 1999. I photographed Rosa Parks and Princess Diana. I got to spend an entire afternoon photographing Snoop Dogg. I photographed Rage Against the Machine at the 2000 Democratic National Convention. I found myself in every corner of the city chronicling the LA story. Then in 2011, I transitioned from photojournalism to politics. I supported a candidate for LA City Council and when we won, I became the communication director and senior advisor. And now, after a decade-long career in City Hall, I've launched Brandemir & Associates, a PR and communications firm that allows me to continue to tell the LA story.